Hey, it's Mike here, and today we're gonna to cover some new events and discoveries around cultured meat or lab-grown meat or alt meat or clean meat, whatever you wanna call it. There have been some major updates in this field, things that I was unaware of. We've got a technological breakthrough that vegans in particular should care about. We have some legislative developments and some laughable resistance by cattle farmers. All right, let's go. First, for those of you that don't know, there are now quite a few companies that can simply take a biopsy, a small sample of adult stem cells, and then culture that in a bioreactor, AKA grow it in a lab, though these companies are really trying to get away from the term lab-grown meat because it isn't particularly marketable. It goes without saying that these products could massively change our food landscape. They could disrupt the $200 billion meat industry and literally change our landscape. In the US, we use about 50% of our lower 48 land to raise livestock, for example. And from this dude, I think this is going to be the greatest revolution in the history of modern agriculture. I had to pop that dude in there. He made it sound epic. The point is we raise and kill about 70 billion land animals every year and 50 to 60 of those, depending on the source, is chickens. And that's why this next big chunk of news that we have here is pretty important. You may be familiar with Hampton Creek and their product Just Mayo, which is wildly popular. Well, now they are just Just Ink. Just, just, justy. And they are planning on launching their cultured cell chicken under the title Just Meat. Before the end of the year, here is their founder, Josh Tetrick. The next step, uh, keep our head down, keep working hard, and before the end of the year, uh, launch the world's first meat product without needing to kill an animal. What will it be called? Just meat. The product is essentially a chicken nugget because that's the easiest thing to grow. Here's a recent taste test via the Wall Street Journal. The moment of truth. Let's do this. Here she is. Mmm, tastes like a chicken nugget. You did a great job as a chef with the exterior, but the interior is nice and soft. It's kind of spongy. And people are talking down this chicken nugget. I will say Americans love chicken nuggets and they definitely do not care what's inside of them. So I think there's a bright future here. And much like the Impossible Burger, that plant-based burger that bleeds legume-derived heme iron, it is gonna debut in restaurants first, likely fancy ones. Excuse me, waiter slave, how much is the new nugget? $100? Make it $200! And now you might be thinking, by the end of the year, doesn't that only give them a few days? Or maybe you're watching this in 2019 and it's already passed? Well, we'll see. Maybe it'll happen, maybe it won't. And it's worth noting that it's more of a consumer testing situation and they're still a couple years out before it's in the meat aisle. And it's also unclear what their cost is. Are they just debuting this in a restaurant and taking a major loss to get some research done? or can they actually get the price there for restaurants? And it's worth noting, we did see Mark Post's burger, he's now Mosa Meats, go from $325,000 to just $12 in two years, so it could happen. Now, the last time I made a video on this topic, there was a huge question in the air, and that's the one that vegans should definitely be concerned about, and that is the growth medium. And that is the cocktail of nutrients that these products are grown in, and back when I made my video, no one had said for sure that they were able to make a plant-based one or a non-animal one. And currently, the standard is to use bovine fetal serum, which is a byproduct of the dairy industry. Basically, drained baby cow juice. Really gross, sorry for the description. Since then, we've seen that Shojin Meat, a group of DIY meat culturers in Japan with the end goal of space farming, has grown some plant-based and yeast extract-based mediums. I personally think they should change their name to Animeat. But a quick read through their method shows that they are often, but not always, using egg growth factors and definitely not using ethical means of getting samples. As for Just Inc. and their growth medium, they say that they're gonna go to market without using bovine fetal serum. Those nutrients are gonna be obtained from plants. Animals in nature eat plants, right? And given how close they are to launching, that implies that they have found a solution, but they haven't outright said it, so it's kind of unclear. But there is one company that claims to have outright cracked the code, and that is Aleph Farms in Tel Aviv, Israel. They currently are making mini steaks, and from Business Insider, quote, the company also claims to be growing them in a medium that is free of fetal bovine serum. But looking critically at the language, that doesn't mean that it's animal free. It does not mean that it's vegan. It could be, but it could also be using egg derived growth factors or something like that. And for some perspective on how much this technology could change the game, they grow their steaks in just two weeks 
and a normal steak involves growing an animal for over a year and then slaughtering them, fine, maybe a full-size steak when they get it down will take six weeks. That is still insanely fast. Right now, their little steaks cost about $50 each to produce, but if they can get it down to like $5, it's it's over. That's a game changer. And what makes Aleph Farms ahead of the game is that while other companies are growing burgers and nuggets, they actually have fully formed structure there, and here's how they do it. Quote, instead of growing only one or two types of animal cells on a flat surface, Surface, Aleph grows four types of animal cells in three dimensions. Meat is a complex tissue. This breakthrough includes various cell types found in conventional cuts of meat grown together outside the animal to form a 3D structure similar to meat but using more sustainable, safe, and ethical methods. Obviously, that's much more like how animal tissues grow in nature. Yeah, this is gross. Now for another one that's pretty interesting and I literally had no idea about, and that is cultured fish, in particular, the company Finless Foods. They plan on entering restaurants by 2019, and they say, quote, we're starting by producing bluefin tuna, a fish that has recently been threatened by predatory fishing practices. Tuna also has a ton of mercury that's bioaccumulated up the food chain, but theirs will have no mercury, just one more advantage. I did reach out to them asking what type of growth medium they use, but it was super short notice, so they're definitely not gonna get back to me. However, in this article, they mentioned that growth medium costs are coming down dramatically, and since fetal bovine serum is really expensive, that's at least hopeful. And I wanna stop talking about particular companies, but there are a lot of them out here. Here's a list, you can go ahead and Google these, and we don't even have time to get into the gelatin makers and all of that, let's just move on. All right, now for the legislative aspect. Just Meat will not be debuted in the United States because the legislation, the regulation does not exist yet. And for Just Meat, quote, regulatory approval is the final step to bring them to market. Maybe it'll be in China, maybe it'll be in Japan where the company has partnered with a special type of beef producer, Wagyu beef. But in terms of regulation, the FDA is now teaming up with the USDA to develop regulation. The FDA is gonna be more on the cell culturing technology side and the USDA is more on regulating the end product with labeling and so forth. Terminology is possibly the biggest hurdle here, and regulation-wise, they will be referring to it as cell-cultured food products. And labeling and defining this is, is quite interesting. The Iowa Cattlemen's Association, for example, calls it fake meat. Of course. The meat cultures want to call their product clean meat, but the cattlemen said that that would imply that their product is dirty. Well, newsflash, between all of the blood and fecal matter in E. coli, it is. And a lot of cattle farmers are trying to ensure that there is a label that differentiates it. Probably they would like it to just say fake meat right on the label. We'll see what happens. But a consumer report survey found that 5% of people didn't really care. They said it should be labeled as meat without any further explanation. 40% said it should be labeled as something other than meat. And 49%, the largest chunk, said it should be labeled as meat, but accompanied by an explanation about how it is produced. All right, now I wanna put forth some quick thoughts on ethics because I know this whole thing sits really not well with a lot of vegans. I really am only gonna get my full support to companies that are doing a completely animal-free growth medium. Otherwise, there's gonna be an animal impact to this, albeit way less than just straight up slaughtering animals. And that's the main point here. Well, it might feel weird and wrong to have these animal cells on people's plates. What's more wrong? Raising and slaughtering 50 to 70 billion land animals every year or growing some animal cells in a Petri dish? Yes, they are animal cells. They are an animal product technically, and so once again, I'll answer the question, no, I do not plan on eating these. I do not think that they're gonna be healthy in general, but I would rather have people eating that than a once living animal. And internally, my main case for this being developed is someone's Uncle Norbert. Uncle Norbert sadly will never stop eating meat. He's one of the billion people on planet Earth that smoke, so he doesn't care about his health. He walked out on his children, and if you don't care about your children, you're definitely not gonna care about animals. And he also doesn't care at all about what he's actually eating. You should see what he eats now. And so when these products show up in the grocery store, he's not gonna care. He's not gonna care about a little label. My point is there's definitely a portion of humanity that is made up of crappy people people, and this is really the only way to get them to stop harming animals. It's also, by the way, a great solution for carnivorous pets, companion animals, and so forth that need to eat meat to be optimally healthy. In the end, we're probably still two to three years out until cultured meat hits the supermarket shelves, but it's happening in restaurants very soon, which is pretty amazing. And I obviously see a massive value in products like Beyond Meat, which in particular areas of the US are outselling their beef, 
their cow patty product in the supermarket. That is an awesome solution that I think is more than worth promoting, but the more solutions we have, the better the odds are for the animals. But let me know down below if you have a different perspective on this. Different perspectives are definitely welcome. And in case you're wondering what I'm wearing, this is Basic Vegan Babes Vegan NASA shirt and I'll link it below. I'm not making any money off it or anything. Finally, for those who are curious, I'll link my super meat video, my last video on this topic, which goes into the actual process of how this stuff is made. All right, that's it for today. Feel free to like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.